Exodus 33. <laughs> Exodus 33. I love I love all the ministries in our church. I just I just love it. I love watching people serve. Uh, we we pray every week in my pastor's training class. I'll just go ahead and put a little plug in for that. Every single Sunday morning at 7:30 a.m. I have a class in my office for anybody who feels like you might have a call on your life, um, and I, I, I do training and, and, and a lot of that stuff, so, so if, if that's you, uh, feel free to join, but every week we pray for people in the church, and we pray for different ministries in the church, and we went around and uh, prayed this morning, and so, for example, we began with uh, Tanner, and he uh, prayed for the bus ministry, and, and I'm thankful for the bus ministry, I'm thankful for the people uh, that that get here early and stay late every now and then, uh, and probably most days, they were the last ones to leave the premises here because they uh, love bringing other people to church and taking them home. What an awesome ministry that is, right? Um, the, we prayed, uh, John was praying for uh, the, the media and the, all the guys and gals up there that do what they do up there above my pay grade, but they try their best to keep things uh, sounding good and the internet um, are live and things like that. I just, I'm thankful for people who take those things uh, seriously. And then we went around, on the, around the room and we just continue to pray for different things. I just love, I love ministry and the people that serve in ministry. My favorite ministry, you ready? My favorite ministry is the ministry that God leads. It's called glory. It's His ministry. Glory of God is the manifest presence of God in all of His splendor as He reveals Himself to man. It's, it's His manifest presence of God. There's just something about God's presence in the churches. The Bible says that unto uh, glory in the churches, there's glory in the churches. And that's God's ministry. We come, God shows up too. You're not the only one who came to church today. God has a special ministry of showing up Himself, His glory. I, I'm, I just want to launch into a, a series uh, about glory, about His glory. And, and I want to define a couple things. I'd already defined the glory of God. Let me, let me define this too, because sometimes uh, you can get a little confused. There's, there's the glory of God, and then there's glory to God. So you know how the Bible talks about we give God glory? Right? And we don't, we don't give God the glory that I'm talking about, like His his, his manifest presence and all of His splendor. We, we don't give Him that. That's who He is. We give glory, and, and this is how we give glory. When we come together like this, we give glory, and what we do is we are ascribing to Him that He is great. That He is far above anything and everything else that we could set our eyes and mind on and we give Him praise and we give Him honor. We give Him glory and it's just that we are acknowledging how infinitely great He is. And He is. <laughs> and He has a ministry where He shows up to affect us so that we can be more like Him, so that we know how to better worship Him, to encourage us in this world that we live in. You know, you'll never, great, I almost said you'll never get through this life if all you see is bad. I wrote that at first. I wrote, you'll never get through this life if all you see is bad. 
But that's not really the case because you'll get through this life, you'll just get through it kicking and screaming and complaining and griping and all the things. So I, I added a word. You'll never gracefully get through this life if all you see is bad, if all you see is sin, if, if that's all we see. And I'm telling you, that's not all we have to see. We have more to see than just that. But if all we see is the bad, the negative, the ugly, and God's working on my heart all through this last week about this. Um, if that's all we see, we can get really cynical, we can get really backward, we can get really mad, we can get all this stuff, and all of a sudden now the devil wins because we got to see the devil we want to take a look at. Well, I'm telling you what, we have something else to look at. We have God. And he has a special ministry called glory, where he wants to be seen in there. And here we are, gathered together in his house, praising, honoring, and giving glory to God, the one true God, who has the greatest name of all names, Jesus. The world needs to know that we see him. Uh, I don't know about you, I was talking to the Himes, they went to the zoo yesterday. I like going to the zoo. I like nature. And one of the things I love to see at the zoo are the big cats. That's my thing, the big cats. I'll walk through the reptile house with you, but it's not my thing. Penguins, cool. Feeding the giraffes, cool, especially if you have kids. But, like, I want to see the big cats. I want to see the lions and the tigers, and I want to see the bears. <laughs> <laughs> there's no other way you can say those three animals now, right? It, nobody says bears, tigers, and lions. <laughs> All right, anyways, I want to see the big cats. And there have been many a times where I go up to the, the lion enclosure, and I don't quite see where they are. You, you know what I'm saying? They're high, and they're laying down somewhere behind something. And, you know, you're looking, you don't see where they are. But it, it doesn't take very long. If you just look over, there's usually a pocket of people who have eyes on the lion. And if you just see them and where they're looking, you can reposition your entire placement to get a better angle at the king of the jungle. The world needs to know that we are in the right placement. We've got eyes on the king of kings. And for the lost world who doesn't quite know where to find them, they need to at least be able to look over at us who's over here like, oh my goodness, look at Jesus. And they can at least make their way over where we are to try to get a look at this angle. You with me? And when you see him and you acknowledge his glory in his presence, God just has a way of changing the whole room, man. He has a way of, he doesn't have a way of just changing the whole room. He has a way of changing people's lives. Another way that I'm going to define glory, God's glory, the ministry of God's glory in this lesson, this message this morning. Let's call it this, and we're going to see it in the text. The glory of God is God's goodness on display. Now, the, the cool thing about the glory of God is you can swap out that word with a lot of other words because any way that he shows us how great and awesome he is, he's, he's showing us his glory. So this morning, I hope you see his goodness on display we might look another week and you might see his beauty on display. We might not look another week and you might see something else of his on display. It's his glory. Let me, let me uh, give you this before, I, we, before we get into the text. We're going to spend, I'm going to squeeze out everything out of this text that I can. We've got a lot of ground to cover. 
But my job as a pastor is many. But one of the things, I, 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 need, to, I need to get us in the Word. I need to train everybody up in the Word. I need to edify your prayer life and things like that. But one of the other major jobs that I have is just to get us all to get our eyes on the King. Get, let's get in the position to get our eyes on Him. And that's one, of the, that's one of the things I love about when we gather like this. is because it's a group of people that's coming to get our eyes on the King together. I've learned something about God's glory. And it's this. I didn't know of any other better way to, to write it than this. God's glory is greater among us when God is glorified by us. His glory is greater. It's more clearly seen. It's, it's more clearly known. His glory is greater. That display, you know, you're thinking of God's goodness on display. It's, it, you can see that display even easier when people are gathered together glorifying Him. Remember? Praising Him, honoring Him, ascribing greatness to His name. Let's look at Exodus. Let's look at some historical glory. I kind of left off. I, I preached a series in the wilderness, and I kind of like stopped right before 33 a couple months ago. And God has a plan for all of that, and we're going to pick back up in 33, just for today anyways. And we're going to see the rest of the story. And it's a story of his glory at this point in Scripture, as I mentioned before, at this point, His glory wasn't glorious anymore to His people. That's a problem. That's a problem when His glory isn't glorious anymore to you. And if you're at a point where you're like, you don't, you don't like come hungry and thirsty for His Word to gather together with brothers and sisters in Christ as we all together ascribe greatness to His name and just give Him honor and praise. If that doesn't excite you at all, maybe the glory isn't glorious Worthy anymore to you. And you need to repent seen. of that. You need to get right with God. And then Worthy sing Him again. Their anger through the blood of Jesus and then see what He wants to he gives you to deliver. A lot of people come and stand just up here mad. I didn't do that. I'm not doing that. Depart. because Go up hence, thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swear, unto Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, saying, unto thy seed will I give it. All right. He says, go. These people had derailed. Let's just say. Do you remember what had just got done happening? They just got done making the golden calf. Moses had been up on the mount. He had sat in God's glory. I love that. I just remind you. He had sat in God's glory for six days before God spoke to him and began to give him what he wanted to give to the people. He sat there for six days, and then here comes the Lord's voice, and he began to speak, and he sat there for another 34 days in God's glory, and then he comes down. He comes down, and he sees the people had made a golden calf. They made an idol. And part of the goodness of God that we're going to see this morning is that even though they had done all that, he's going to be good to them. I don't know about you, but I am thankful that in my life, even though I've done all that, he still wants to be good to me. He said, he said, I want you to go. Now listen, God had promised them a land flowing with milk and honey. Yeah, he's, he's going to promise again that he's going to drive out all their enemies. Now, that sounds awesome, right? If God says, how about we make this deal? I take you out of Egypt... I, I walk with you all along the way. I'll provide for you. I'm going to take you to a land that's far above and better than any land you've ever known. And all the people, the enemies that are there, I'm going to drive them all out for you. Cool? What do you got to do? What do we got to do? Just believe and follow. That sounds good, right? Yeah. Okay. But because of them turning their back on God 
he says something else here. He inserts something here that would have shattered them to the core. And it would shatter us to the core too. And look, look what he says. He says, I will send an angel before thee. So I'll drive out all those people. Look at verse 3. Unto a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in the midst of thee. For thou art a stiff-necked people. Wait a minute. That would have broken them. We're downgrading from you to an angel? He's like, I'm not going, I'm not going in the midst of you. You guys are stiff-necked people. They're like, the next verse says that when the people heard these evil tidings, they mourned and no man put on his ornaments. Look, what were the evil tidings? Well, it's not an evil tiding that I'm going to give you the land flowing with milk and honey. That's not an evil tiding. It's not an evil tiding that, that God was going to drive out all the en enemies and provide for him. What was the evil tiding that they mourned over? The fact that he said, I'm going to send an angel. I'm not going. That would be the worst thing that God could say, say to a group of people. I, I remember, I remember as we were moving from the old VFW building to our second building at the, um, the Rivers Crossing building there where the flea market is. I remember this was the scripture that God gave me that it was time that we move from our first place to the second place. I, 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 I remember because I'm like, God, I, I, I don't want to do this. I don't, I don't want to go if you don't want us to go. And, and, and you know, all these things. And then, and, and then I got to this point in Scripture. And then God, as we walk through this, we're going to see that God says, my presence will go with you. But man, if God says, oh, I'm not going to go. I'm going to send you, but I'm not going to go. I don't, want to, I don't want involved in that. I want you to go. I want to go with you. Sometimes, I, sometimes you, you've heard this said before, and some of you guys, and you've experienced it in so many different ways. You know the saying, sometimes you never knew what you had until you lost it. Guys, I'm telling you, when it comes to the glory of God here at this church, I don't ever want to lose it. I don't ever want to lose it. Do you? Man. Man. Let's make sure that in every way we can, at every turn, at every stop, in every ministry that we have, in every person's life, that we're regularly stopping and saying, okay, God, I'm still behind you, right? I'm still with you, right? We're still together on this, right? I'm still submitting, right? I'm, I'm, I'm right where you want me, right? And let's make sure that all along the way, it's like because we love you, because we praise you, because we glorify you, because you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and I don't want to do anything without you, without your presence, because I don't want to lose his sweet presence at this place. He goes on, the people... They begin to mourn and they humble themselves. There's a cleansing that takes place here. There's a cleansing that takes place here. And let me just say this. If you, if the glory isn't glorious anymore, anymore to you, there's, you need to go through a cleansing of your own. There needs to be a, a humbling that takes place because one of the ways, one of the things that helps us see how great he is is when we stop thinking about how great we are. It's when we think of how great we are, how awesome we are, how much control we have, all the things we can do, that we don't think that he's that great anymore. Guys, we can't do anything without him. He is great. So, so the humbling, the cleansing... That might need to take place in your personal life is like, okay, I'm so sorry that I got so self-conceited. You are everything. So they humble themselves. And then Moses, he takes the, the tabernacle and he takes it outside the camp and he sits it outside the camp. And the Bible says that everyone that sought the Lord went out there. Okay, you with me? Golden calf, idolatry, 
Moses comes back. God's like, I'm going to send you into the land. I'm not going. I'm going to send an angel for you. People are like, no way. They're humbling themselves. They're... And, and then, then Moses, Moses takes, takes the, the tabernacle, tabernacle which, which is where, where they, they had worshipped. It was like a portable uh, sanctuary, let's just say. They, they set it out there, and, and anybody, anybody who sought, sought the Lord would go, go out, out to it. it. So then, so then you, you, we, we get, get to see, see something start, start taking, taking place. place. The group, the group of, people of people who were living, living in idolatry begin to step, step away from, from that, and then they make an effort to go out to the tabernacle, as many as wanted to seek the Lord. You know what I think of when I think of that? I think of people getting stirred up. People getting stirred up. Dude, you know what's awesome? It's to be around people who are on fire for Jesus. It's contagious, ain't it? It's contagious. It's, it's just one of those things you get around some of these people and you're like, yeah, we're all brothers and sisters, but I, like, I want to rub shoulders with these guys and gals over here because they are on fire for Jesus. And there's just something about when people get their heart and mind set on Jesus, it just, it just stirs something up. It stirs something up. I, I hope that we can stir each other up when we get together like this. That's why you can't just say, I got church at home. You can't, Guys, when we get together like this, we're doing all kinds of things. According to the scriptures, one of the things we're doing, though, just to keep that, this point simple, is we're stirring each other up. Hopefully, we're stirring each other up. Hopefully, we're not giving each other dirty looks on the way out. And like, rah, 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 man, you say, man, blah. Not going there. Stir each other up. Stir each other up. Verse 8, it came to pass. When Moses went out under the tabernacle, that all the people, catch it, they what? Rose up and stood every man at his tent door, and what? They looked. They rose up and they looked. Listen, if, if the glory of God is his presence, his manifest presence, if it's his goodness on display, we need to be looking for it. We need to be watching for it. He says, they got up, they looked after Moses until he was gone in the tabernacle, and it came to pass, as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. I love it. And the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door. All the people rose up and worshipped every man at his tent door. There's, they saw the glory of God. They got to see it. You could say, this was the glory of his power in his presence you know because it helps signify and show the power that he had over delivering the people from egypt too. the the presence there at the tabernacle man they rose up and they saw it we've got to rise up on sundays and on wednesdays and every day whether we're together or not we need to rise up and try to look for the glory of the lord in our lives they looked up and they saw it. The Lord spake unto Moses, verse 11, face to face as a man speaketh unto a friend. And we know that was obscured in some way, as we'll see in a few minutes, uh, because nobody can look at him and live. And he turned again into the camp, uh, but his servant catches this. This is good. All right. Glory of God in the tabernacle. Y'all with me? This is so good. Glory of God in the tabernacle. Everybody had risen up. Everybody had watched. Well, there was one that couldn't get close enough, man. The guy's name is Joshua. It says in this verse, But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. He didn't want to leave. There is, man. The, the beauty, the splendor, the magnificence, the greatness, the, just the power of God. I hope you don't ever get enough of it. Joshua, he didn't ever want to leave. When young men addict themselves to the glory of God, they can become conquering warriors like Joshua. I mean, think, think about, about all the things, things that he had done and did after this. When, when young, young women, when young, young ladies, 
when they addict themselves to the glory of God like this, to seeking his face, to beholding him, they become conquering warriors for Christ. Young and old. This, this example was a young man, and we got to see more of his story. story. It doesn't matter who you are. are. We, we need to set, set our face to him. him. Look, Look at it. it. He, he says, says Moses said unto the Lord, See, see thou sayest unto me, bring, bring up this people. people. Thou, thou hast, hast not let, let me know to whom thou wilt send with me. me. Yet, Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore, I pray, I pray thee, if, if I have found, found grace in thy sight, show me now thy what? He says, show me thy way, way that, that I may know thee, that I may find, find grace in thy sight, sight and consider that this nation, nation is thy people. people. You know, you a lot, lot of times we look, look for the wrong, wrong things. things. You know, we're, we're trying, trying to see something great. great. We're, we're trying, trying to see something good. And sometimes we just look for the wrong things. He, he asked, asked, he, he said, said, show me thy what? what? Everybody say what? He, he said, show, show me thy way. He didn't say, show me your works. He didn't say, show me a, a, a powerful act. act. Why? Because, because I feel, I feel like, like Moses knew that his works and his acts don't outlast his ways. His, his ways, ways outlast, outlast his, works. his works. You know, he, he could have showed him one thing, thing and, 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 you know, that he, he might, might have been able to see, like, a snake, a rod, snake, a rod turning into a snake and back. And back. That, 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 that would be sweet. But he's like, like I, I wouldn't show me your ways. I, I, I want, want to know your ways. ways. And, and then, then it's like God answers it in the very next verse. He said, you want to know my ways? Here's my way. It's my presence. He, he says, says, and he, he said, my, my presence, presence shall, shall go, go with thee, thee and I will give thee rest. And he, and he said, said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. If, if your presence is, isn't going with us, don't take us out of here. In other words, if you're not in it, I don't want it. If you're not in it, I don't want it. I mean, I mean, he, he could have probably, you know, they, they had been complaining about, oh, I wish you were back in Egypt because, because of all the stuff. stuff. I wish you were back in Egypt. Egypt. But, but at this moment, it would have probably been fair for Moses to say, just leave me here to die if I can't go with you. If you're not going to be with us. Because his glory, his presence is his way. If you, if you want to know, know you're like, like, how does God, God work, work in this church? church? What, 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 what way does God, God work in this church today? He, he works in the way of his presence. presence. You can, you can, people, people can get up here and say, oh, God's, God's here, oh, God's here, oh, God's here. People can say what they want to say, but you'll know when you've been in the presence of God. You don't need somebody to tell you he's here, he's here, he's here. You'll know he's here. And, and we, we know, know that it is, and, and part of the reason that, that we know that is because we see him, and, and we praise him, and we glorify him. And, and we, we, we tell him how great he is and how awesome he is, because, because we know he is. is. But, but I'm, I'm telling you personally, you'll, you'll know when you've been in the presence of God. Because he does things that no human can do. He, he works, works in your heart in such a way that, that no preacher could do. do. Not, not, not the, the best speaker in the world can, 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 can even come close to measuring up with just, just, just a little bit of, of what, what the presence of God can do in your life, in your, in your heart. heart. That's, That's why, why I say, say you'll know, because it's unmistakable. He says... Verse 16, 16, for wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is, is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. Did you guys get that? I'm going to read that one more time slowly. I don't think I did that verse justice because I read it way too fast. All right. 
For wherein shall, shall it be made known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. What is he saying? It's the same thing that I can say in our generation today. What makes us a special people? Moses is like, the thing, thing that, that makes, makes us special is your presence, presence here. here. That's, That's what, what makes, makes us special. What, what makes, makes us special, and I'm, and not, I'm not talking, talking about, about just here in this place, place. I'm, I'm talking, talking about, about what makes you special, special. is the, the presence, presence of God in your life. life. Can, Can I, just I just tell you, you, you are special, special but, but it's, Christ in me. It's Christ in you. What a privilege that we have to bear and carry his name. He lets us carry his name with us. The greatest name. Moses, he doesn't just ask to see his ways. He wants to see his glory. And Moses, and Moses like, like, I know you know me by name. In verse 18, he said, I beseech thee, thee. Show me thy glory. Show me thy glory. That, that might need to be a prayer that you pray every day for the next two months until you, until you get that renewed heart and mind. Show me thy glory. Show me thy glory. And it's almost like God answers him again right away. He says, you want to see my glory? Catch, Catch this, this, Ray. This, this is good. good. He, he said, do you, you want to see my glory? glory? I'll, I'll show you my goodness. goodness. That's, That's why I said at the beginning of this, the glory of God for today is God's goodness on display. His magnificent, great goodness. He said, I will make all my goodness Pass before, before thee, thee, and, and I, will I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. Before thee. Oh, oh man, man, this is so good. good. He's, He's like, like, I, I want to see your glory. He's like, I'll, I'll show you my goodness. goodness. I'm, I'm going to pass before you, and, and while I'm passing before you, I'm going to proclaim a name. name. The name of the Lord. Lord. I, will I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. gracious. I will show mercy on whom, whom I will show mercy. mercy. He's, He's like, like, I'm, I'm going to show, show you my goodness. goodness. I'm going to show, show you my glory through my goodness. goodness. I'm, I'm going to show, show you my majesty through my mercy. And he, he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see and live. So God's like, I'm going to show you my goodness. I'm going to show you my glory. But you can't actually look at me and live. He so he comes up with a plan. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me. I love that line. He says, Behold, there is a place by me. And thou shalt stand upon a rock. Now, he was talking about an actual geographical location here. But, man, I, mean, I, I couldn't, couldn't help, help but to think, think there's, there's a place, place next, next to God, God. at and his, his right hand where his son sits. His, his, his son who died, died on that cross and bled and and to save me. me. And he says, there's a place by me. And here it says the rock, and Christ is our rock. There's a place by me. I'm going to put you on the rock. You see, see what, what I'm getting, getting at, at here? here? Guys, I'm, I'm telling you, if you, you want to see the glory of God, God you need to be on the rock. rock. You, need you need to know, know Christ. Christ. He said, I'm going to put you on a rock. There's a place by me. It should come, come to pass that while my glory passes by, I will lift thee in a cleft of a rock. I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand. Thou shalt see my back parts. But my, but my face, face shall, shall not, not be seen. seen. There's, There's the plan. plan. And, and, then he, and then he gives Moses uh, an, an agenda. agenda. He, he says, Lord, Lord said to Moses, Hew thee two tables of stone, stone like the first. Remember, the first, first one's got, got broke. broke. All right? right? 
I will write thee upon these tables the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest. Catch this. I love this line too. Verse 2. Be ready in the morning. Be ready in the morning. Be ready in the morning. Why does this, this jump, jump out? out? To, to me, it jumps, jumps out because, because we know God, God is always with us. us. We know he's, he's always with us. us. I, feel I feel like, like sometimes sometime our view of the display of his greatness can be blurred or limited in some way, way maybe, maybe by the lack of ascribing greatness to his name. But it also seems like there are special times that are just a little bit different than the day before. Where his, where his glory is seen and known in a different and a special way. way. He, he said, said, be ready, ready in the morning. morning. Can, Can I just encourage you? Well, well I, got I got you here on, on a Sunday, Sunday morning. morning. Can, Can I, I just, just encourage you that every Saturday night before you go to bed, bed try it for a few weeks. weeks. Don't, Don't make, make a lifelong commitment. Try, try it for a few weeks. weeks. Every, every Saturday, Saturday night before you go to bed, pray this. Lord, help me to be ready in the morning. Help me be ready in the morning because I'm ready to see your glory. I'm ready to be in a special place at a special time to see your glory. And if you prepare yourself that way, who knows, man? He says, be ready in the morning, and come in the morning unto the Mount of Sinai, and look, and present thyself therefore to me. Be, get ready. Be ready for the morning, and then when, when the morning comes, present yourself to me. We're doing that now. We've come together. We've presented ourselves to the Lord, just like we are right now. And he goes, he goes on, on in verse 5, it says this. Just read a couple more verses. verses. And, and the Lord descended. <laughs> the Lord descended in the cloud and, and stood, stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. He came down. You've heard, You've heard me say, say this, this before. before. We, we don't, don't like conjure, conjure up some, some kind of like presence, presence of God. God. He, he sends, sends it down. down. We, we come ready. We come present, present ourselves. ourselves. We, we come, come prayerfully seeing the glory of God. God. Show, Show us your, your glory. glory. Show, Show us your glory tomorrow. tomorrow. Show, Show us your glory this morning, morning Lord. Lord. Show, Show us. us. And, and we come, come and we're ready. And then we present, present ourselves. And, and then, then here he comes and he says, hey, hey don't, don't be confused, confused if, if when, when I show up, up I, I tell you who I am. am. That's, That's what he, he does, does here. He, says, he, he proclaimed, proclaimed a name. name. The Lord, Lord passed by and proclaimed the Lord. Lord. Look at verse 6. The Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. Now let me remind you something. His, His definition, definition has, has to be, be our, our definition. definition. When, when he, he comes, comes out and says, let me, let me proclaim, proclaim a name, the Lord, the Lord God. God. When, when we're, we're talking, talking about the glory of God, when we're talking about who he is, we're talking about how great he is, we have to define him the way he defines himself. How does he define himself here? He says that he is merciful and gracious. Thank you, God, that you are so merciful. Thank you that you are so gracious. 
if you, you have, have been, been sitting, sitting even here this morning, this morning it, may it may not have been, been this morning, morning maybe other weeks, weeks. If, if you sat, sat here, here or in your, in your prayer, prayer time at home or wherever it is, it is if, if you've just, just sat, sat here at his, at his feet, feet and you have felt his presence in, in the way of mercy and in the way of his grace, guess what, guys? You've been in his glory. You say, I don't know if I've ever been in his glory. If, if you, you have, have felt an overwhelming washing over you of his mercy and his grace, you've been in his glory. I hope this morning, I hope right now, that you are sensing because somebody else has said his glory is his felt presence. If you, if you have, have felt, felt that, that this morning, morning hey, you, you might, might just be able to say, say I, didn't I didn't just go, go to church, church today. today. I, I sat, sat in his glory this morning. What, what a better way, way to say, say what, what you, you did, did today. today. If, if you, he, he said, said I'm, I'm, I'm merciful, I'm gracious, I'm long-suffering. I tell, I tell people, people all the time, the time. I, I, I mean, this, this is, is, I hope you, everybody, everybody here knows that you would get, get this from me. me. If you ever you had, had a conversation with me, me. and, and I, 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 I believe I can say it, it. If, if you came to me at the problem and you're, you're struggling, struggling, I will say this, I will say at some point, point I'll be the last one to give up on you. You'll give up on yourself before I'll give up on you. Because I've made a commitment in my life to try to reflect him, and he's long-suffering, and I'll be long-suffering as long as he's been long-suffering, which means I can't ever give up on you. He's long-suffering. I love one of my favorite verses. The Bible says the long-suffering of the Lord is salvation. He's not giving up on you. If, if you, you if you're, you're here this morning and you're just in you're and you're, and you're, you're, you're just trying, trying you're like, like okay, okay even as we've been uh, preaching I've been opening myself up to just seeing you maybe, maybe I came a little closed off and, and, and whatever, whatever but, but I'm, I'm trying to open up and, and if, if you're, you're just getting, getting a little glimmer of the fact that God loves you and he's gracious and merciful and he's not giving up on you guess what you're, 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 you're getting, getting a little, little beam, beam of his glory shining down, down in your life, life now. now. He, he says, says, I'm, I'm abundant, abundant in goodness. In truth. <laughs> this, this book, book is, is truth. truth. That's, that's the only way I, I, that's, that's the only reason I know, I know about who he is. is. He's, He's abundant, abundant in goodness. goodness. Christian. Christian. God's, God's not, not sitting, sitting up, up in heaven, heaven mad at you all day, every day. He, he loves, loves you. He, he, he's, he's, he's been long-suffering long if you've been, been straying. He's good. He's, he's good even when we're not, not because, because he's, he's never not good. good. God can't be bad. He can only be good. He defines good. He is the epitome of good. So when words get said like abundant goodness, I don't even comprehend what that even means. Because he is good as he is. But, but what, what I, I think, think it, it might mean, mean is that his goodness, because of his glory, overflows out of him onto us. And so if you're here this morning and you're just getting that feeling, you're acknowledging, you're seeing that he's good, you, you just, just may be, be in his, his glory, glory this morning. He, he says, He keeps mercy for thousands. There's not, not a thousand people, people in here. here. But he but keeps, keeps mercy, mercy for, for thousands. thousands. Simple, Simple math. math. 
He has, he has mercy, mercy for, for every single, single person, person in this room, I know. Somebody, somebody needs mercy, mercy this morning. morning. Somebody, somebody, somebody's, somebody's got, got something, something coming, coming like, like at the, the end, end of this verse, verse says. says he's, he's not going to clear, clear guilty. guilty. Not, not only is he good, but, but he's, he's just. just. He's, 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 he's good, good and he's just. just. And, and because, because he's just, just and because, because he says, if you, if you never come, come to me and receive the forgiveness of sins because of my blood, I have got to give you the just punishment for those sins, which is hell. Okay? You can't say he's not good because he's just. If, if anything, anything, I'm, I'm so, so thankful, thankful that, that the scripture, scripture says there that he's abundant goodness and truth. And, and so, so if you've heard truth today, today which, which you have because it's come out of his word, maybe you've had, had God's, God's glory flowing, flowing through your ears into your, your heart, heart because, because of his word. word. I'm, I'm so, so thankful, thankful for his goodness, for his mercy, for his grace, for his long suffering. And I'm thankful that he tells the truth here that he has mercy for thousands. That's the easy way of saying for anybody and everybody he has mercy. But he also says he's not going to clear the guilty. Verse 8 says, Moses made haste, bowed his head toward the earth, and worshipped. He made haste. He bowed, he bowed his, his head, head toward, toward the, the earth, earth and he worshipped. He made haste. He, he bowed, bowed toward, toward the earth. Could you imagine as he, as he, as he, he said, said, show me your glory, glory and, and he's, he's doing, doing all these things. things and he's, I, can I can imagine he's down like this and, and, and he's, he's, he's just in, in the glory of God. God. He knows that he is great he deserves praise and he deserves honor and glory and he deserves it all because he's great and he's like oh my goodness God you're so merciful you're so gracious you're so long suffering and you know what you see happen here when he's worshipping you don't see him complaining that he only got to see the back part of him that was sufficient it satisfied his need to see his glory he just got a little glimpse could you imagine the day that we see Jesus we're going to be able to see him face to face Man, man in his glory. We're going to be able to see him face to face. And we're going to be able to say the things that we've been able to say here in the of God. You were so gracious. Thank you for your grace. You were so merciful. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for never giving up on me. When everyone else wanted to, when everyone else did, you were there. You never quit. Thank you for your abundant goodness. You're so good. Every day I got to experience your goodness. Thank you for your truth. Because it wasn't for your truth, I wouldn't know your goodness. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know, know your, your, the, the degree of your, of your mercy and your grace. And thank, thank you, you for having mercy for me, saving me. me. Guys, could you imagine he's, he's falling down, down he's, he's worshiping, worshiping, and here we are. We, are. we, we, we get, get more information. information. We, we know what Jesus did. did. We, we know, know the death, death that he died. died. If, if anybody should be on their face, it should be us. Because of, of what, what he's, he's done, done for us. us. Man. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Maybe, Maybe you want to fall down at an altar, altar this morning. Just thank, thank God for his mercy and his grace in your life. life. You're playing on being baptized, you can get changed.
every head bowed and every eye closed. Let me ask you a question. He said it. He said it. At the end of that, ver that verse there, he's got mercy for you. He's got forgiveness for you for every sin, every transgression, every iniquity. He's, he's ready to forgive. But you need to call out in faith to receive that forgiveness. So let me ask you a question I ask every service. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, if you don't know today that if you died that you'd go to heaven, but you really would like to know that, you'd like to get right with the Lord right here, right now, would you just look at me? You can do it right here, see, and I won't call you out or embarrass you. Just look at me until I see you. Look at me until I see anybody else. See you, man. Anybody else? Just look at me until I see you, please. See you. Anybody else? I see you too. Anybody else? I see you. See you, bud. Six or seven. Now listen, listen, if you, you if you, you looked, looked at, at me, me and you, 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 you mean business, business you want to get, get right with God, God which means you want to be saved right now. now. You, you want, want to have, have all of your sins forgiven. forgiven. You, you want to become, become a child, child of God, God right here and right now. now. You, have you have to believe the gospel, and this is the gospel. You have to believe that Jesus died on the cross for you. He, he took, took your, your punishment, punishment for you. You, you believe that he was buried in a tomb, and that you believe he rose again from the dead, and that he did that to save you. It's, it's the, the, the whole idea of somebody, somebody taking, taking your punishment, punishment for you and giving you forgiveness. And if and you if believe that in faith, faith the, Bible the Bible calls that salvation being saved. saved. And so, and so if you'd, you'd like, like to do that, that right here and right, right now, now like many, many others have, have would, would you, you pray, pray this with me right, right where you are? are. Just, Just pray, pray Lord, Lord, I know, I know I'm a, a sinner. sinner. I, believe I believe you died on the cross for me. me. And that you, you rose, rose again from the dead. dead. Please, Please forgive, forgive me of all my sin and save me right now. Make me a child of God. Lord, I believe. Just with every head down, every eye closed, just once more, let me ask you this. If you prayed that and you meant it this morning for the first time, would you just look up at me? Just like thank God. Praise God, you too. Praise God. Anybody else? You prayed, say, I prayed that. I meant it. I see you. I see you. Two of you guys. I see you. Five. Did you pray that? Praise God. Six. Did you pray that? Praise God. Anybody else? Just so I can thank God for you. God is so good. Amen. U7, U7, as they're, they're maybe, maybe about, about ready, ready back, back there. there. U7, U7 and, and some, some others, others. we're getting ready to baptize. I can't get, get my, my ring off, off my chubby, chubby finger, finger this morning, so, so I can show you these illustrations. One, One of the things, things that, that we do, that we preach, is, is what the Bible, Bible commands, is that after you get saved, you get baptized. baptized. There's people, people getting baptized, baptized because they've been saved. saved. And, and it's, it's just like, like I love this illustration. It's just like this wedding ring. Uh, I'm married right, right now, now, even though my ring is not physically on my hand. hand. I, I didn't, didn't, the, the marriage, marriage didn't, didn't take place. The moment it just like crested that, that plane right, right there. there. It, it wasn't, wasn't like, like some, some kind of magic point when all of a sudden the ring's on, I got married. No, the marriage took place when I made a heart commitment to my wife. 
then I was married. This is done to show the world that I'm not ashamed of it. So when we get baptized, it's a heart commitment that we make with the Lord. If you, if you got saved this morning, and God forbid, if you got saved this morning, you can get baptized right now. I mean, I mean I'll just let me tell, tell you that, that we, don't we don't do like, like this thing, thing where you have, you have to wait a certain period of time. If you got to say it today, we, 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 we are, are always ready, ready to baptize you. You, you got, got clothes? Go, go get them. Let's, let's go. go. Just, just know, know that. that. But if, if you, you were, were to go, go and, and, and get a bad, bad tragedy and you lost your life, guess where you'd be the second you took your last breath? You'd be in heaven. Because, because you made, made a heart, heart commitment with the Lord. Lord. But, but as, as soon as you can, you, you need to publicly show that you're not ashamed, ashamed of Jesus. It's the first thing he wants you to do when you get saved. saved. And, and that's, that's uh, I, make I make that, that it's, it's not, not, I shouldn't be a plea. plea. I, 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 say, I was, was going to say plea, plea but it's an, an encouragement, that challenge. It's what God wants you to do next. Okay? And we have several that are going to be doing that. This is great. A couple of them heeded that challenge right away. Right. They want to be baptized, baptized right, right now. now. Yeah, yeah, one of them is. This, this is Brittany. Brittany. And, and uh, Brittany, Brittany, have you received Jesus, Jesus in your heart as your Savior? Savior. Do, you Do you want to live for him for the rest of your life? life. It's upon your profession of faith, faith I baptize you, my sister, sister, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Ghost. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Kaylee. 
Kaylee just, just got, got saved, saved this, this morning. morning. I love, I love it. it. Your Savior, you and one of them for him forever. It's upon your profession of faith I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Brayley also got saved this morning. That's awesome. My sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost, buried the likeness of his death, raised the likeness of his resurrection. Careful. This is Connor. Connor was one of the many that got saved on Easter Sunday. Connor's ready to be baptized. Connor, you receive Christ as your Savior. You want to live for him forever. It's upon your profession of faith, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Buried in the likeness of his death and raised in the likeness of his resurrection. And then last, but not least, just shortest, is Ansley. Ansley got saved Wednesday night, uh, just a couple nights ago. Have you received Jesus as your Savior? Do you want to live for him forever? It's upon your profession of faith. I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Bear the likeness of his death. Raise the likeness of his resurrection. That's good. That is awesome. God's good, amen? I mean, my arm's already wet. Somebody else is ready to go. Let's pray. pray. God, God, we come, come to you in closing, Lord. We're thanking you just once more just to be in your glory. Thank, thank you for these five. Thank you for the seven uh, who called on you as Savior today. Lord, I pray that God, you would work in their lives in such a special way, Lord, that they would just, just get, get so, so connected, connected here and be discipled and, and raised up as a warrior, warrior Lord. Lord. God, God, I pray, I pray that you'd use them. I pray that you'd use us as a church family to encourage them, come, come alongside them any way we can. can. Lord, bless, bless us as we go, and I pray that the next time we meet, we'd be ready in the morning. May you show us your glory again. Lord, we ask all these things in your name. name.